This is Nigeria Diaspora Television. We are at the media center at the Oliver Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg to attend a media briefing by the police minister and the Hawks Inspectorate. The Hawks is a special police inspectorate that deals with crime in South Africa. And the reason why we're here is to uh, get information about the alleged uh, attempt to uh, traffic some ladies, uh, one of which is a South African national who were apparently lured to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And it's been alleged that there are two uh, people involved, a Nigerian national and a Zimbabwean national. We're yet to be given information as to the identity of these persons and the press conference is about to commence shortly. Before we begin, I want to make the following important opening remarks. Princess is a genuine victim. She deserves our unquestionable love and care. Members of the media, the public, are requested not to re-victimize her. She did absolutely nothing wrong. She is a genuine victim of a serious crime. This is a message I sent to her immediately when we were able to have direct communication with her in Malaysia. Princess is our own child, a citizen of our country, and we are very delighted to welcome her back home safely. As we gather here, I would like all of us sensitize that every stage of the trafficking process can involve physical and psychological abuse, manipulation, economic exploitation, and abusive living conditions. As your government, we are also saying one victim is one too many. We need to have to hear about 200 girls before we take the matter seriously. In this case, it was one of our own children, the young adult Princess Matangu. Our focus must be on us happily saying our girl is back home. Princess, alongside other female young people, from across the world, across the spectrum of nations such as the United States, Philippines, Haiti, Rwanda, Zimbabwe, India, Denmark, Dominican Republic, Mexico, Peru, South Africa, Barbados, and so forth, were lured into traveling to Malaysia for a supposed Miss United Countries beauty contest. Facebook was the main entry point to these beautiful young women it makes this a potential cybercrime as well. I'm happy to report that our efforts to bring our girl home led to all the other potential victims being freed. The behind the scenes work started when I received a call of concern from a person who knew Princess. Also here yeah, with us, he had suspicions and needed the ministry to help. We activated Interpol South Africa under Brigadier Naidu, who is here with us and the Hawks. Lieutenant General Matagata is also here. This was a priority crime issue in terms of your government's determination. We also activated our embassy in Malaysia. The operation led to the arrest in Malaysia of a Zimbabwean suspect, and more arrests may occur here in South Africa and across the world in the coming days. I call on all persons with information, persons who have worked on or with Miss United Countries, Face of Limerick, Mr. and Miss Lakewood, Miss Teen Heritage, Miss Cataman, Miss High School World, Miss Heritage South Africa International, Miss Varsity Free State, Miss Supreme Queen International to come forth by contacting their nearest police station or the Hawks with information relating to this contest. Families with missing loved ones who may have mentioned this contest are also requested to contact their police stations or the Hawks. I also wish to take this opportunity to make a public appeal to our young people, girls and boys, to be circumspect and reduce their trust on the internet as not every website or social media account is exactly what it may 
portray itself to be. Verify and do not trust. Inform an adult and tell a friend. South Africa signed and ratified the United Nations Convention against transnational organized crime and the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children. As a signatory, South Africa is required to address human trafficking as a crime and it make it punishable by law. And we have done that. In July 2013, President Jacob Zuma signed the Prevention and Combating of Trafficking in Persons Bill into law. The law indicates three requirements that have to be met for human trafficking to have occurred. In this case, our citizen, Miss Princess Mathangu's case, ticked all three indicators provided for in our law, which is the basis at which I took a decision to intervene. These three indicators are one, a person has to be delivered, recruited, transported, transferred, harbored, sold, exchanged, or leased within or across the borders of South Africa. Two, there has to be a threat or use of force, coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power or vulnerability, or payments or benefits to a person in control of the, of the victim. Three, the victim has to be trafficked for the purpose of exploitation, which includes sexual exploitation, servitude, forced labor, child labor, or the removal of body parts. Upon my assessment of this, we then had to live up to our motto, which is, we have no time to waste time. South Africa has adopted a national strategy to combat human trafficking through prevention, response, and the support for victims, known as Tsireletzani, meaning protect in Shivenda. Tsireletzani in Venda, yes. Okay. The Tsireletzani strategy has three focus areas, which are cooperation and coordination, capacity building and development, and a prevention and public awareness strategy. Although trafficking out of South Africa is much less than trafficking into the country, International Organization for Migration in Pretoria says, Trafficking destination countries include Ireland, Zimbabwe, Israel, Switzerland, Macau, and the Netherlands. This means our young people must not simply trust just because a first world country is their destination. I want to repeat this advice, verify and do not trust. Inform an adult and tell a friend. Intelligence-led investigations have revealed human trafficking for body parts, for medical organ harvesting, multi- and religious rituals. The trafficking syndicates are very well organized. Internet savvy have criminal networks that are able to provide victims with travel documents and visas. There is a link between human trafficking and narcotics trafficking. We are delighted to have you back home, Princess. Remember, you did nothing wrong. You are a genuine victim. Use your experience wisely, spread the news about the dangers of the internet. Or otherwise, organized activities like the one you have come across. Parents, school teachers, and caregivers must help young people cope with the pressures of the fourth industrial revolution. I thank Interpol, the Hawks, Derko, and the South African Embassy in Malaysia, the Malaysian police and staff at my office for a job brilliantly done. Minister, first of all, I must congratulate you for the efforts you made, especially in, on, on the weekend, to be able to apprehend these criminals who are trying to traffic uh, young women and use them for all sorts of nefarious activities. Uh, the reason why we're here, first of all, when I read the um, statement that you were going to have a press briefing, I was so happy that there was not a Nigerian involved. But when I got here, the young lady over there has been speaking to uh, a media channel, and she mentioned that a Nigerian was involved. So I just wanted you to clear that. Is there a Nigerian involved? Because we would like to know, because every time there's a human trafficking issue, Nigerians are always uh, apparently the first to be named as being involved. Um, the motivation uh, will be determined as to exactly it was for purposes of sex, trafficking, uh, whatever that it is. But 
the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, for all the intentions and uh, uh, you know uh, being ambitious and uh, looking out and chasing a dream uh, the girl left South Africa going to a pageant and then uh, she encountered uh, these people with the intention to traffic them when they arrived um, there was nothing like a beauty pageant and uh, over time they've actually been tossed up and down and all of that um, there is a Nigerian involved the coordinator of this whole thing uh, is the Nigerian but uh, I didn't I didn't say it you asked so uh, uh, so investigations are, are continuing we have, we have fully we have fully um, um, activated um, our police the matter is with the police uh, that's why princess is not yes because this is not like welcoming a hero from a world cup it is a police matter and uh, we are investigating including those people you are talking about in Bloemfontein and uh, with all their claims uh, that they are making about the uh, princess and all of that our policy statement is very clear we treat a victim as a genuine person uh, we're not working on this thing on the basis that uh, we prejudice people who report serious crimes to us we act because where we are today in South Africa, women are under siege. And uh, we're not going to waste time about reacting to cases of women who have been antagonized or trafficked or alleged or otherwise. We take it when you come to us to report a case. It is a genuine case. And women and all shouldn't basically, they must use that to their advantage. To ensure that uh, they report their cases and the state protect them. Uh, uh, so I, I'm just saying that uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the reports, it should be very, very clear that uh, our, our aim is to basically protect the girl and the, and, and, and the woman. Um, we, we have come across those claims and the people must be aware that uh, we are not a picnic. We are a law enforcement agent. And uh, in this particular instance, some of them are bordering on defeating the ends of justice. So they must understand that where is the police station and they report all those issues. So uh, we are aware of that and uh, we have already been in contact, not even in contact. We have called those women into questioning as we speak, including further investigations on this particular matter. This is not the Facebook uh, shua shui matter. It is a serious crime issue. So every matter will be followed to the latter. And it is fully, we are fully activated. Our police, hawks are leading in the investigation. And the princess has arrived in South Africa. She's here. Um, in this particular instance, she's in the care of our police. And uh, at the same time, all the leads in terms of this matter, working with Malaysia uh, and us, our police in South Africa, all, all will actually be followed to the end. People are arrested in Malaysia, even here in South Africa, wherever people could be arrested, uh, should be arrested. I don't have the figures uh, in terms of what you ask, uh, in terms of human trafficking in South Africa, but what we know and the revelation of that is that in the figures that have been released, uh, we don't account for high percentage in terms of South Africa. We don't account for high percentage. So we, 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 are, we are not highly affected by this question of human trafficking. Where it affects us is when people are trafficked in our country uh, from outside. For all different purposes, prostitution, in the brothels, uh, there are many people who are here in this country illegally coming from East Asia and Asia in the brothels, and then uh, in the control of drug lords and uh, those who are promoting their brothels here in the country, illegally in the country. They are here. And uh, where we find them, we deport them back to their countries. And they also came here under the pretext that they are coming for greener pastures in our country. Greener pastures is to be in a brothel 
and locked up there. And some of these brothels who have closed them, down here in Santon uh, and so on in Bryanston, we have closed them down, run by dubious people. So we, we, we have closed them down, people arrested, some saving time in jail, kids sent back home. So that's what that's what we're doing. So uh, we are not highly affected in terms of in terms of this. So obviously, the princess story is very sophisticated, and seems to be very complex. If you look at it, you know, uh, here is a girl who's been a Miss Glamour, Free State, whatever that it is. There comes something called United Heritage, and then uh, she's there and recruited to go to attend to this patient to this pageant. And there she lands in Malaysia. And then with all other 14 kids there in Malaysia. In fact, not from princess, a girl as far as the United States of America. Says this guy told them point blank that he's going to traffic them. You know, it's not a question of a beauty pageant. So we can't be told by people who are breaking the law here in the country about the fact that those who are suspects and been held elsewhere are actually innocent and they are running a hunky-dory, you know, proper stuff here in the country. We, we don't buy that story. We, we, we are investigating and they will be investigated, all of them. And uh, they will be brought to questioning and the law will deal with them. So everybody is on board and the police, as we speak now, we are in charge and they were on top of the situation. General Matagata. Thanks, Minister. Um, you have already, Minister has already alluded to the fact that in terms of um, statistics, we don't have in our country a lot of women that are coming from South Africa, but from outside the country, that are, are, have been trafficked here to the country for various reasons. And secondly, uh, the question of the arrests in Malaysia can be confirmed that there has been an arrest. We are working with the Malaysian law enforcement because this is a big investigation. As you have heard, that it touches a lot of other girls and women from other from various countries. Mm -hmm. So we are doing the investigation locally, but we are in 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 contact with the Malaysian police uh, in Malaysia. Whether there is what nationality has been arrested that side, one can confirm. There is a Zimbabwean national arrested, but there are other nationalities that would be follow up in the in the investigation that are part of the syndicate that we will be looking into. So um, that I can confirm that a Zimbabwean national has been arrested. Possibly there might be Nigerian, I don't know, but there is a possibility because we're looking into everybody who's involved in this uh, inc incident. Um, what one can can say about the, and I don't want to go to figures, but it is a fact that, as I indicated initially, that a lot of women are coming from outside the country that are trafficked to South Africa more than our women in the country that are trafficked. So obviously for us is to follow up on women that have gone missing, probably trafficked as well as this. We were fortunate in this inc in incident to be able to get and have a speedy uh, response to what had happened to Princess. So it is it is like that and uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that motive will be determined mm -hmm. through the investigation. That's the only way we would determine the, the, the motive and where they were destined to, what would have been the motive. All that will come out uh, in the investigation that will be under, that is already undertaken between ourselves and the Malaysian Law Enforcement Agency. I can confirm that we have our <coughs> victim support um, that is already engaging with the uh, princess. Obviously, it's a traumatic experience, and therefore there is a need to get the necessary support and uh, it is there currently taking place. Of, obviously she's traumatized mm -hmm. and uh, she's had a long trip uh, from wherever she come from via Dubai to South Africa. Um, it's a traumatic experience. Uh, so so, so that, all of that have been taken care of. The parents are here and um, she's coming from a Christian family. The father is the pastor. The father is here, the mother is at home.
and uh, she's not feeling well as well. So you can understand. So 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 all is been taken care of, and uh, what needs to be done is been done. Uh, in terms of the South African Police Service, uh, as part and parcel of our work uh, on a daily basis when we are confronted with such matters. Through our Interpol office here in South Africa, so we are able to immediately engage with the, the Malaysian law enforcement, hence the speedy response and even the arrest that followed. And it's continuing, the collaboration is still continuing. Thank you very much, uh, Minister.